My home may not be a castle My clothes may be lacking in style And if you could sit at my table A meager supply you might find But oh, it's not what you see That makes me a king Makes me a king To me God made a world full of beauty, many things to enjoy every day, but the secret to hidden possessions is to love Him and serve Him each day. But oh, it's not what you see that makes me a king, makes me a king. To me, I have everything, all that I need, all that I need is treasure. But oh, it's not what you see that makes me a king, makes me a king. To me, I have everything, all that I need, all that I need is treasure. Tonight, are you saved? Amen. How many are saved? Amen. Amen. Are you saved? Amen. Are you lacking anything? If there's anybody in here tonight that is saved, and you've been honest with the Lord, and you're lacking anything, you let me know. I didn't say anything you want, now. But anything you need. But the farther we go, the more we realize, folks, He meets our every need, doesn't He? Every need. world don't understand it, but that's fine. I understand, and you understand. Lord gave us mothers. Thank God for them. And then God gave us His Son. Mine. Thank the Lord. It's good to have Jason and Michelle back with us tonight. Jason come and preach for us. I appreciate him. And I just thank the Lord for you, Jason. You come. And uh, I appreciate him being here uh, again with us uh, tonight. Uh, we appreciate each one of you being here tonight. Jason. Amen. Well, good evening. Good evening. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. amen. It's good to see you all. Missed you all. Been thinking about you all, praying for everyone. Amen. And uh, pray you all have had a, a good good month so far, good month last month. It's been been a few weeks since we've been here, and uh, but it is good to, good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. amen. And uh, it is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. You know, God has blessed... Uh, Really, I blessed my life with some wonderful mothers, my grandmother, my mother, and my wife, and uh, my mother-in-law. Can't forget my mother-in-law. And uh, but uh, it is uh, it is wonderful. Mothers are a wonderful, very important uh, responsibility. They play a major role in our society today. And I believe if mothers haven't lost their 
way, if you will, haven't lost the sight of what their purpose is, I believe our nation would be a different nation. But, uh, but tonight, I want us to think a few things about mothers. We're in Exodus chapter 2 tonight. A mother was giving advice to her daughter, and she said, Cook a man a fish, and you feed him for a day, but teach a man to fish, and you get rid of him for the whole weekend. <clears throat> A police recruit was asked during the exam, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? His answer was, call for backup. But mothers, mothers, we're in uh, Exodus chapter 2 tonight. We'll see a very familiar story about a mother, a mother by the name of Jochebed. You had a baby. So we're in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 1. <clears throat> if you there, say amen. amen. Exodus 2 and verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him and the daughter of pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river's side and when she saw the ark among the flags she sent her maid to fetch it and when she had opened it, she saw the child, behold, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. Lord, what a blessing it is that we can be in your house. And Lord, I thank you for the privilege to be in this pulpit, Lord. Lord, I thank you for Bible Baptist. I thank you for what this church means to me and my family. I thank you for a pastor. I pray you bless him, continue to watch over him, and uh, Sister Leanna, Lord, that you'd watch over both of them. I thank you for what you've brought them through, what you continue to do in their lives, and I just pray you'd be with the church here tonight and uh, throughout the coming days. I pray you'd meet the needs and watch over us. Help the Holy Spirit would speak uh, through me tonight, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would be present among us and, and in the hearts and the minds of the people here tonight. I pray that you'd prepare their heart. Lord, that it would be soft and tender for the receiving your word. Lord, we take these truths, apply it to our lives, put them into action. Lord, and I just thank you for what you're going to do. I pray for a good day for mothers. I pray they've had a good day, and I pray the remainder of the day would be blessed for them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I like that song, Treasures Untold. You know, we, we have so treasures untold. Just as the Bible says, I hath not seen nor ears heard. You know what? what's been prepared for us? But something beautiful and something wonderful that God has created is mothers. Mothers. They're beautiful. Beautiful, uh, not just physically, but I mean beautiful is a, uh, it's an element or a, a key part to the development of, of uh, really man, mankind. Existence as we know it. We see here a story uh, by the woman of the name of Jochebed, uh, who was married to a man by the name of Amram. This lady, obviously, she was blessed with child. Uh, we know that her child was name was Moses. We know this. We, we learned this from very early up, and we've heard, I'm sure this passage has probably been read in this, in this, out of this pulpit many and many a times. And uh, I'm, I'm sure more than you could count on all fingers and toes. But uh, the truth of the matter is we see here this story, even though it is a very familiar story, we see an amazing thing that happens. We see a, this important responsibility, this role as a mother, is, as we see here, 
that's given to Jochebed. We see in the first part of this uh, passage tonight, we, we see that obviously there was a decree, there was some circumstance. We know that uh, Pharaoh had, at that time had commanded all the babies to be thrown into the river. And uh, that was his decree. He, you know, this this is shortly after we know Joseph had passed away, and and uh, he they forgot about Joseph. You know, the the goodness and the things that Joseph did, and thought about Yahweh. So they started, you know, things, and Israel was into slavery, and we see all these things. We read through all these things. And, and as we go back and we survey uh, the preceding chapters and and uh, so forth, and we see how uh, this Egypt, obviously a great empire, a great dynasty, if you will, very powerful, um, and uh, in in more ways than one, obviously a very worldly one. And uh, but uh, we see here this Jacobet is uh, understanding the decree, understanding the rules, understanding the law, if you will, but she has a higher power. She realizes that the responsibility God had blessed her with a baby boy. But as the decree was, we see that the decree was, well, you're to take your little baby boy and you're to throw it in a river. Now, I can only imagine, you know, as, as we've had, God has blessed us with eight children. And I, I was talking with a fellow the other day. He, he, it was his first grandchild. And he was, uh, he, he said, I held it, you know, because they, they didn't allow him to go to the hospital. Finally, the, his daughter got home and brought the baby home, and, and he held it for the very first time. And, uh, but I asked him, I said, did you cry? And he said, yeah, I bawled like a baby. And, uh, you know, as, 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 a, as a mother, even as a father, uh, even as a grandparent, you hold that baby, and, and it's just precious. You know, beautiful and precious and something God has created, just an amazing, you know, I, I've, it's never ceased to maybe, I, I've had the fortune and the privilege to watch all of our children be born. Uh, some of them have uh, taken longer, some of them, uh, you know, have, have been very fast, you know, as, as you get more of the, the ones, you know, as you get closer to, the more you have, the faster it seems like it goes. But, um, but, it, but regardless, all of them have really brought tears to my eyes and how precious they are. And the Bible says here that when they saw that baby, when they looked on that baby, it was a goodly baby. It was a proper child, as we find in the Word of God. That means he was, he was obviously, that was the most beautiful thing they'd ever seen. And she realized that this baby was a blessing from God. She realized that God had given her a responsibility to do. But here she's faced with a, a decree. She's faced with a law, a rule that says you've got to kill the baby. You know, we've got some... Things like that today. We've got some things out there that says, well, if you don't want the baby, or if you think the baby's going to cause a, a hardship on your life, or, or you know, if it, and we create all these things that, that absolutely, just absolutely mean nothing. But they take the baby's life. But she was, she was above, above that. She realized that even though the decree was out there, she had faith. She had faith. She knew that this blessing from God, uh, if he blessed her with his child, he was surely going to protect this child. He knew that if uh, she had, you know, God had provided her with this baby, he was going to provide a way that this baby could escape death. So she had faith. And as we find in the book of Hebrews, we'll see later. But, you know, she had a ministry. I titled the message tonight, The Ministry of the Mother. The ministry of the mother. You know, the uh, mothers have a wonderful ministry. Uh, you know, my, my wife has the, um, you know, has the responsibility. You know, she's right now, she's, obviously, she's a stay-at-home mom. She takes care of the kids. Uh, we do homeschool, so she teaches the kids and takes care of the kids. And, and I wouldn't want her job. I really wouldn't. I, I wouldn't trade my job for her job any day. Uh, she's got a hard job. Moms, you have a hard job. And uh, you have a place in the home that dads can't fill. You re they really can't. And uh, you have an awesome responsibility. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, sometimes the mother is maybe the only mother. But I tell you what, it's it's very important. My mom was a single mom, and uh, you know it was it was tough. You know you don't have a father at home. And uh, but regardless, mothers are very, very, very vital and important in the home. But I believe the most powerful, the most amazing, the most crucial force and most effective thing on earth right now is a mother and her faith. The faith of a mother, I believe, is more powerful than any, than any force on this earth. Anything that you can think of, I think a mother's power uh, through faith and prayer, I think that, that exceeds all of them. 
So when I think about that, the ministry of the mother, in 1819 there lived a man, uh, was born a man by the name of Willem, William Ross Wallace. William Ross Wallace. He lived and died in, uh, he lived in 1819 to 1881. He wrote a, a poem. And the poem's title was, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is the Hand That Rules the World. You've heard that phrase? Hand That Rocks the Cradle. And it says, Blessings on the hand of women. Angels guarded strength and grace. In the palace, cottage, hubble, all no matter where the place. Would that it never storms assailed it, rainbows ever gently curled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Infancy is the tender fountain. Power may with beauty flow. Mothers first to guide the streamlets, from them souls unresting grow. Grow on for the good or evil, sunshine streamed or ever whirled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Woman, how divine your mission, here upon our natal sod. Keep, oh, keep the young heart open, always to the breath of God. All true trophies of the ages are from mother love imperiled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Blessings on the hand of women, fathers, sons, and daughters cry, and the sacred song is mingled with the worship in the sky. Mingles where no tempest darkens, rainbows evermore are hurled, for the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. But a woman by the name of Jochebed, she had a cradle one time, and she realized that that cradle and her hand was the hand that rocked the world, if you will. We find uh, Moses, as we, we see the story there, we know Moses, we know what God, how God used Moses in, in a great and mighty way. Moses is actually mentioned in 784 verses in the Bible. Moses is, is a name that was mentioned probably more than any, any other uh, between the Old Testament and New Testament. We see uh, an amazing man, uh, you know, that uh, God had used in a great and mighty way. And sure enough, this, this, this mother, uh, she could have thrown that baby boy into the, into the deep uh, of, of the river. But praise God, she realized that she had a ministry. She had a purpose. God had given her this blessing, and God had given her a purpose. Mothers, God has given you a ministry. Your family is your ministry. You know, I, you know, obviously, I, you know, God has called me to preach, and, and you know, it's, it's, you know, people see me. They don't see a lot of behind the scenes. They don't see what goes on at home. They don't see the, the, the hours that my wife spends with the kids and the, those things. And I'm not trying to bring attention to my wife. I could go through here and many of the mothers that, that have the responsibility of raising their kids. And, and, you know, it's an awesome responsibility. And it's an, it's an amazing responsibility. But it is a ministry. And someday you will get recognition for that. You know, in this life, it may not seem that way. And this life, it's tough. In this life, it, you know, you're the underdog, if you will. And uh, you're the one that's kind of in the shadows. But one day, God is going to, there's going to be a special blessing for mothers in heaven. I really, truly believe it. Because I believe that mothers play such an important part, even the role of the church, the church itself. But a mother's ministry. Tonight, I just want to think about seven things tonight. Think uh, about this motherly role, this ministry of a mother. And I want us to think about Jochebed. Think about this story of Moses and how this uh, lady who, through faith, she uh, forsook what the king said. We, we know she hid him for three months for as long as she could until she could no longer conceal him. She placed him in the river under the, you know, with the ark and the bulrushes in the, in the, uh, uh, there along the, the river. And, and, you know, it just so happened that Pharaoh's daughter came there to bathe. Now, now she never went there before. I really don't think she, she maybe as a kid, it's hard to say what brought her there. It was said that archaeologists have discovered that in the, in that area in Egypt, there was such lavish baths and so forth. She had no reason to go to the Nile River Bay. Uh, who would have thought it? But God, but God, but God in His great providence and His great wisdom and, and, and the way that He uh, deals with things, he, he obviously saw fit that Pharaoh's daughter here came to the river. She found Moses. She pulled him out of the river. Obviously, we know the story as he grows and one day he forsakes everything that that uh, uh, basically that, that he was raised on. But there was something important. There was something that would have had to happen. We see here in this passage that, that she was given her wages. She was told, go ahead and nurse this baby. 
Now, I, I did some research, obviously, in the Bible. I, did, I didn't find it as far as what the age was when Moses was given back to Pharaoh's daughter. But I, I truly believe from the scriptures, I believe that was an age, you know, where she, uh, his mother, Jochebed, would have had the ample time during those development years. I heard anywhere from scholars believe from anywhere from five to six, seven, sometimes eight years. Depends on what scholar it was, but regardless, I believe that the impact that that uh, mother, that Jacobet had on Moses' life was in those development years. Right. Mothers, it's very important in those development years, in those early years of their life, and even even throughout their uh, you know late youth and teenage years and so forth. It's so important that we're instilling the things and the principles of God to our children, to our children. Dads, we're to support that. But moms, that, that's it's such a, an amazing ministry that we have. So tonight, thinking about that, the first thing I find is a seeking faith, a seeking faith. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. This was a mother that, that was seeking, I had a faith that was seeking. She was seeking God's will, God's plan. You know, I believe that God had given her, you know, some revelation, some idea that, you know, this, this boy was going to be something great. That God was going to use this, this boy in a great and mighty way. The Bible doesn't say for sure, but uh, I believe she had a seeking faith. Again, the faith is, of a mother is one of the greatest and most powerful, most amazing forces on this planet. On this planet. But she had a seeking faith. She sought the kingdom of God. She was seeking the kingdom of God. She was seeking the will of God. Mothers, we need to be seeking the will of God in our lives. In our lives. God has a will for you. God has a plan for you in the home. It, it's obviously, you know, it's not a woman's place to stand up in a pulpit and preach. But it's a woman's place to be in the, in the home and, and, to, and to preach and to minister to her children. It's, it's very important. And dads, obviously, we're, we're the head of the home. We're to be the ones that make the final decision, if you will. But that mother is the heart of the home. That mother is the glue that holds that family together. She's one of the, she is, if not the single most important element in that, in that home, humanly speaking. You know, God, obviously, we know is the, is the one that holds everything together, and he's the one that builds that foundation and so forth. But the mother is what keeps it together, if you will. But she had a seeking faith. Not only did she have a seeking faith, but she had a surrendering faith. Her heart was tender. Her heart was so that God give her, this is the direction, this is your will. I, want you to, I don't want you to kill that baby. I want you to have faith in me. I want you to trust me. Regardless of what society tells you, regardless of what the king says, regardless of what the popular thing to do is, I want you to trust me. I want you to have faith in me. This is my will for you. Have faith. And she surrendered. She had a faith that surrendered. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 11 with me, if you will. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> we're going to start in verse 23, if there say amen. amen. Hebrews eleven twenty-three 23, it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. It says, By faith Moses, by faith his parents, they were not afraid of that commandment. They weren't afraid of what the king said. They weren't afraid of what was happening around, what everybody else was doing around them. They realized that God had given them a responsibility. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of the Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians, saying to do, were drowned. 
By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, and they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. You say, well, that's a lot of things that happen. You're absolutely right. Moses, obviously we see there as Moses, obviously he came to years, he, he slew the, the Egyptian that was inflicting the people. He realized that, wait a minute, this is, you know, during those development years, during those times, I remember the ministry of my mother. I remember those things that my mother taught me. You know, parents, mothers, the kids won't forget that when they get it. Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he'll not depart from it. He'll not depart. Those things, those characteristics, those principles, biblical principles and those things that, that we should stand fast on Christians, those are the things that we need to be writing in the hearts of our children. But she wrote those in the hearts of her child, little Moses, and, and he realized that. And by faith, all of these things happened, but it started with the faith of a mother, the power in the faith of a mother. That faith we see here brought down a great nation. I think it was Adrian Rogers said that little that little ark became the battleship that destroyed one of the greatest dynasties in the time, Egypt. But by faith, by faith. We see also there is as that faith obviously led not only to to uh, leading Egypt, leading the uh, Israelites out of Egypt, out of bondage, if you will, uh, passing across on the dry land, the Jericho falling down. We see Rahab, and we see the stories there, on and on and on. The chain reaction, the, the events that followed, all of the the powerful things that happened beyond that point, all started with the faith of that mother, the ministry that that mother had. Not only do I find it's a surrendering faith, but I find it's a sowing faith. It's a sowing faith. You say, what are you talking about, a sowing faith? We, we know the Bible says, you know, what we sow, we reap, right? So the law of sowing and reaping. You know, if we plant a, a kernel of corn, we, we, we see the corn's going to come up. If we plant, you know, whatever seed it is, we expect that that's what it's going to, and that's the way it is. Whatever seeds we plant is the seeds that we're going to harvest someday. And so in our minds of our children, mothers in the, in the hearts and the lives of our children, it's so important that the seeds that, that we're planting and the seeds that you're planting in their hearts and in their minds and their tender hearts and, and in their lives are seeds that are godly seeds, seeds that are, that are taken out of the Word of God, seeds that, that are rich in, in, in goodness and in truth. The world feeds so, our children so many rotten seeds. So many rotten seeds, and, and sadly, mothers today, they're not even raising their kids. They're sending them in front of a television or in front of a video game or, front of, or they're sending them off to somewhere else or letting uh, somebody else's parents raise them and doing other things. Parents, it's, it's, it's an important ministry, and mothers especially, it's an important ministry. God is going to use you and, and your children someday. If we want to change the, the nation around, I believe it starts in the home, and it starts with that ministry of the home and the ministry that the parents have on those children. Right. In Isaiah in chapter 28 and verse 9 it says, Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are wanted, weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. Every, every chance we get we need to sprinkle a seed or, and plant a seed. A godly seed, a seed of, of truth, a seed of, of what God says about, about homosexuality, what God says about, uh, you know, promiscuity and, and all of these things. These seeds that we as parents, as they, as they get older, seeds of truth, not being deceptive, not, not lying, and, not, and, and all of those principles that we find in the Word of God that will lead our children on the right path. But that ministry... That ministry of a mother and that faith of a mother. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18, it says, Therefore sh shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your head, that they may be as frontless between your eyes, and ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house, and upon thy gates." but the ministry of a mother, the faith that a mother has. Moms, you're important. You're so important. And don't ever, ever second guess your, your worth in the home. So don't ever second guess your worth in society. Don't ever, uh, don't ever forsake the responsibility that you have. 
that God has given you. And he's given you that responsibility. And, uh, you know, dads, we're to allow our moms be moms to godly mothers. Says the one who follows me, a careful mother I ought to be, a little one is following me. I do not dare to go astray, for fear she'll go the self same way. I can't at once escape her eyes, whatever she sees me do, she tries. Like me, she says she's going to be that little one who follows me. She thinks that I am good and fine, believes in every word of mine. The base in me she must not see, that little one who follows me. I must remember as I go through summer sun and winter snow, I'm building for the years to be that little one who follows me. You know, moms, you have an amazing ministry. You have an amazing impact on our life. You know, really, the teachings that, that are giving, you know, given, and, and we see as Moses that, that those things that he learned at that early age, he never forgot them. I believe that he was taught these things, his mother and the impact that his mother had in just those few years that she would have had him, whatever that period of time, was such an impact on his life. Moms, you have such a ministry, such a responsibility. And don't forget, again, your worth and, and the value that you have and the impact that you have because they'll never forget that. They'll never forget that. Even when they get through life and they go to do things and, and they'll remember those things that you've taught them, those things that you stood firm on. A little boy was riding his bike around the block and he'd go around and round and round and round the block, just trip after trip after trip and after trip. And the old man across the, across the way, he walked over and said, son, what are you doing? You're gonna wear yourself out. He said, I'm running away from home. He said, you're running away from home? He said, you ain't going nowhere. You're just running around in circles. He said, yeah, but I, I, my mom said I couldn't cross the street. Amen. Now, you know, moms, we have an impact. They don't forget those things. You know, they may get to the edge of, of doing something wrong, but they'll remember the principles, the precepts, the line upon line, those things you've taught them, and they'll not forget them. Not only do I find a sowing faith, but I find a searching faith. You know, moms, you need to be searching. Searching for the wisdom of God. What is the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is, is the Word of God. You want wisdom? It's in the Word of God. It's all. I mean, the Bible has, and you'll never, you'll never discover it all. In your lifetime, I can't imagine. You know, I, my grandmother was a, was a lady that with a lot of wisdom. Her wisdom didn't come from herself. It didn't come from her mother. It came from the Word of God. And sure, she learned it, you know, from, uh, from her early years. But when, she would, when you would ask for advice, she would give you the Word of God. She would give you wisdom and she would give you advice right out of the Word of God. She said, well, the Bible says this about that. And this about that. And this about that. And if we hide this and we seek it, mothers need to be searching. They need to have a faith that's searching. Searching. Searching the, the treasures that God has given us in His Word. There are such untold treasures. Treasures untold, just like that, that song. The Bible has so many treasures, and we need to have a searching, a searching faith. Not only do I find a searching faith, but I find a serving faith. A serving faith. You say, well, I, I, I can't serve. I, you know, I'm, I'm just, yeah, and, and sure, you, you, mothers, women aren't called to preach. No matter who, what, what other, the Methodist church might be doing, or, or any other church, what they're doing, that, that's not scriptural. Bible says that a woman's not the teacher or usurp authority over the man. Bible is very clear about that. And, uh, you know, it's Bible, there's, there's no arguing with the Bible. And that's not what I say. It's not what the pastor says or any other preacher says. That's what the Bible says. That's what God said in his word. But moms, you have an amazing responsibility to serve. There's the, there's the little things. You serve in the home. You can serve in the church. But there's a serving faith. You know, God, you know, God can use people and mothers and to, to do great and mighty things. To do great and mighty things, and I can't speak from anybody's perspective but myself. You know, I'm I'm not a woman. Thank God I'm not a woman. I don't ever want to be a woman. Amen. I think I'm not. I'm glad I'm not my wife. I wouldn't want to put up with me. But women are special. Women are important, and women serve. But but I know when God called me to serve. I remember where I was at. I remember as God was was speaking to my heart. It was back over here, about close to where John was where, where John was at. And God was working on my heart. And he's like the assistant, or the pastor has no assistant. He, he's like, well, you, 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 need, you, you can do that. And I'm like, God, I cannot. I can't stand up in front of people. I can't do that. And I can't do this, and I can't do that. And I made excuse and excuse why I couldn't serve God. 
I made excuse after excuse. And you know what was funny? How God removed all those excuses? Oh, every one of them. Every one of them. And, and you know, something I've really struggled in this process of, of changing, you know, obviously coming from here, it made no sense to me. Why would I want to uproot my family? Why would I take my family from here, a perfectly sound, solid church, and go somewhere that I have no idea where I'm going? I don't know where I'm going to end up. I don't know where I'm going to be. God, that just doesn't make any sense. You did, God does sometimes things that don't make sense. God calls us to do sometimes the things that, that we don't want to do and things that just don't make sense and things that just don't add up. And the Bible says that we don't walk by faith, by sight, right? We walk, we walk by faith. Faith, we, we, we walk in, in, in things we can't see sometimes. We couldn't see the next day. We couldn't see the next year. We, we don't know what tomorrow holds. None of us know what tomorrow holds. But praise God, we know who holds tomorrow. But, but looking down the road, when God started working on my heart and said, you, you can do something, you can do something, and, and I answered that. But one of the biggest struggles for me, and I'll be honest with you, is, is leaving here knowing the pastor didn't have help. But really, it's been, it's been a struggle for me. It still is. And, and I, I've really like, God, why would you call me? And, and, and the other day, I've been praying about because I'm like, God, you're going to have to send somebody. And, and don't take what I'm saying wrong because I love coming up here and seeing everybody and, you know, and, and driving and seeing. It's, it's a blessing to be able to see you all. And I was praying and I was like, God, you got to send somebody because I know you've called me there. It doesn't make any sense. And it's been a struggle for me. And it was almost as if he said, you know, I'm already working on somebody else's heart. Right. The same as you. When you were sitting back there. I'm going to work on somebody else's heart. He said, I've been working on it. I don't know if he is, but if he's calling you or calling you to do something great or help out the pastor and, and like he did me, because I made the excuse. And I'll tell you what happened year after year after year that I made the excuse. It was hard. It was hard for me. It really was. It was hard for me to say, you know what? I can't do that. And God would painfully take those things out of my way. Painfully. Instead of, you know, me, me saying, you know, I, I'm just going to do what God wants me to do. Even though I knew what the right thing would do was, was to serve him. You know, mothers, you have an awesome responsibility. An awesome responsibility. And God has called you to serve in the home, serve in whatever magnitude. Sometimes he calls you to do things, and in your mind, you don't think you can do them. You don't think you can do this thing because it's not popular in society. It's not the, the right thing to do. Maybe God's calling you to, uh, to, to, to homeschool your kids. I don't know. Maybe God's calling you to do something else, something in the public school, so you can have an influence, a positive influence. I have no idea what God is, is doing in your life and doing in your heart, but maybe he's tugging at your heart and said, I want you to do something more for me. I want you to do something a little bit more than what you're doing right now. And you're making an excuse and say, I got, I can't do that. God's wanting a serving faith. Right. Jacobin had a serving faith. She put her faith into action. Serving is, is basically taking faith and putting motion to it. That's all it is. That's putting our faith in motion. Not only do I find a serving faith, but I find a supporting faith. A supporting faith. You know, mothers, they, they are able to provide a support structure in the home that just dads can't fill. That's a void that, that dads just can't, it, it's just not possible. They have a, a way about them, a love about them, a, a, you know, kind of a tender way of, you know, when the, when the kids are crying and things, you know, that sometimes dads don't have necessarily the patience and, and the heart. Just, you know, like, you know, my boys get hurt. I'm like, son, suck it up. Hurry up. Just keep, you're, you're tougher than that. But, you know, moms are, aren't that way. They're supporting. You know, the kids are, you know, wanting to do something. They're supporting. They have a faith that is supporting. And, 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 they, and regardless, they'll give, they'll give up everything. You know, it's sort of like the, the, the analogy of the, the, the mom, you know, it's like, you know, when there's, you know, like for us, we got 10 in our family, and if there's nine pieces of apple pie, and mom said, well, I just I didn't want any of it to begin with. You know, she just, she sacrifices. Those are the sacrificial and the, the support that she offers in, in the home and the support that she is in her ministry offers. You know, mom is just, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. They, they get overlooked. But in our society, again, that faith of a mother is the most powerful and most amazing force right. on the planet Earth, if you will. But a supporting faith. On August 16th, 1987, Northwest Airlines Flight 225 crashed just after taking off from Detroit Airport, killing 155 people. One passenger survived. A four-year-old from Tempe, Arizona named Cecilia 
When rescuers found Cecilia, they did not believe she had been on the plane. Investigators, investigators first assumed Cecilia had been a passenger in one of the cars on the highway onto which the airliner crashed. But when the passengers registered for the flight was checked, there was Cecilia's name. Cecilia survived, found out later, Cecilia, Cecilia survived because even as the plane was falling, Cecilia's mother, Paula Sichan, unbuckled her own seatbelt, got down on her knees in front of her daughter, wrapped her arms around the body of Cecilia, and wouldn't let go. Nothing could separate that child from her love. She supported that child. Even in death, she supported that child. That's the way mothers are. They have a heart of just, it, it doesn't matter about what, what's going to happen to them. They support. And they, there's a, such amazing support structure in the home. But a mother's ministry, the ministry of a mother. And lastly, not only do I find a supporting faith, but I find a satisfying faith. A satisfying faith. You know, mothers, again, you have such an amazing responsibility. And sometimes satisfaction comes in, in, in many a ways. You know, it really, in this life, satisfaction is kind of few and far between sometimes. You know, you, you, you look at the, I guess, the, the challenges of, of raising good kids in a bad society or an evil society. We see all around us, we see, uh, you know, we see such uncertainty. We see such uh, things that are happening that just absolutely make no sense. And uh, we see all kinds of, of goofiness going on. And, you know, in, in, in our mind, we want to want to worry. That's a natural reaction is just kind of to worry, to be like, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? And that's just what the devil wants us to do, because he wants to get our focus off of God and off of what God can do and off the off of our faith, if you will. And he gets our focus on what man is doing and what, what the things that man are able to provide. But God has already promised to provide our needs. He's already promised to provide for us. And, you know, and unfortunately, sometimes mothers understand that a whole lot better than fathers do. But there's a faith that's satisfying. One day, true satisfaction is going to come. Sometimes satisfaction in this life, sometimes the pains of being a mother and raising children and, and the aggravation. I know for my wife, man, she, you know, sometimes she, she, she has a really bad day. Just kids, you know, things aren't going the way they should. And that's just the way the devil works. And so he tries to take those things and tries to take those challenges and tries to get the focus on those, the negativity of it. But, but praise God, one day there's going to be a faith that's satisfying. You know, for moms, it's a satisfying faith. One day in eternity, I believe mothers are going to have such a recognition from God. When they stand before God and they're given an account, I believe there's going to be a lot of mothers. A lot of mothers that are just, you know, humbly, obviously, they're going to be bowing their, you know, on their, and, and laying their feet, at, you know, their heads at Jesus' feet in and, and just humility. But I believe Jesus is going to say, you know, well done. You did a wonderful job. That ministry that you had with your kids, that ministry that you had, those seeds of, of truth and those seeds of, of blessings that you give to your children, look what they produced. Look what they produced. I know that those years of, of labor in the home and all the hard work that you did and all the, the times that you sit down with them and you read the Bible, all the times that you, that you took and you taught them about the, the Lord and about the principles of God and you give them the truth and about the things that you taught them and the example that you set. Well done. Well done, Mom. Amen. Well done. Moms, let me propose to you tonight the most important, powerful, most amazing force is the faith of a mother. The ministry of a mother. Mothers, don't forget that you have a ministry. A ministry that is important as any other ministry. Don't forget that you have that responsibility, that ministry, and the impact that you can have for generations to come. Keep planting, keep planting those seeds, those godly seeds. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd be with us here this evening. I pray that, Lord, that mothers would have had a special day today. I pray you'd provide the needs for every mother tonight. I pray you'd bless them and watch over them. Lord, give them a good evening, good day, the remainder of it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand, head bowed and our eyes closed. Mom, you have a ministry. God is... You know, he's really destroying the home through mothers. You know, a lot of them, he's turned into career people, ones that chasing a career, 
not not secure in a family, not making a solid, godly family. I realize in today's society, it, it takes two incomes sometimes. And, and really, it's sometimes, I know for my mom, she worked a lot, and, and so she was, you know, but she loved me. She, she took care. But mothers, you have an important ministry. Fathers, you too. You have an important role in the home. Maybe you're a father, and you realize God's spoken to your heart tonight about your responsibility in the home. You have a ministry as well. Not only do you, your ministry as a father, you have a ministry to support your wife in her ministry. I pray that we as parents, and we're doing what God has for us. We're faithful to Him through all things.